Welcome, YouTubers, to another One Piece chapter review. For today's segment, we're going to be talking about chapter 828, 1 and 2. Now, I kind of find it hilarious that the chapter's name was named after Sanji's brothers 1 and 2, when the whole entire chapter only mentioned Sanji's brothers, like, like the last two or three pages, I would say. I kind of found that hilarious, the fact that I was, I was wondering about, like, why is it why is it called 1 and 2? When they, when they just barely introduced it. I, they didn't even, like, showcase nothing. You know, however, they did show a case, I would say, a little bit of their personalities. Yes, they did. But other than that, this whole chapter was all about Puddin'. Puddin' was actually the main star of this whole entire chapter. And I was kind of glad at reading this whole entire chapter because it gave me a nice chuckle. It gave me a nice smile. Because when I read this, I'm like, man, Oda, I can see why she's a, a Big Mom's family is a giant, I would say, multi, multi, like a melting pot of different families, you could say. I could see why because in this whole entire chapter, you kinda, they kind of showcase at the fact that Big Mom's family is made up of, I'm trying to remember the correct number, if it was 129 people. Can you imagine that? A whole family made up of 129 people. Now granted, these this whole family members are all strong pirate crews, strong family uh, heirs that are underneath Big Mom's pirate flag. So you're just thinking like, Jesus. Jesus H Christ! I'm not so much as like I'm like not my body's not saying it's like mind blown through all the back. It's the fact that just that I'm just as shocked that like wow, Big Mom. <laughs> I can see why they call you Big Mom. <laughs> oh man, now that is hilarious. That Big Mom reference. Oh snap. That is just too hilarious. Big Mom is literally the strongest mother in the whole entire One Piece universe. I remember reading the comment comment section down below while reading. It was, uh, if I remember correctly, Whitebeard was the uh, strongest pirate. If I remember correctly, um, Kaido was the strongest creature. <laughs> and then Big Mom was the strongest mother. <laughs> Oh man, I died laughing when I read that little comment section below. That was hilarious at the when I read that. Cause to be honest, this whole entire chapter was it was amazing at the fact that they kind of give us a little bit more insight on how big small family is, how big and structured it is. Cause the big mom's family is actually more focused on the fact that they actually when they mean family, they literally mean blood family. Like, none like the other pirate uh, strong Yonko families where they're made up of hundreds of different thousands of people but the fact that they're not even blood related Big Mom's family is is literally straight up own heritage and I'm just like man like Big Mom that like they, 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 they stick it down to tradition like this is a traditional family like I said you can clearly see Big Mom's family is more of a, a classy a classy type of showmanship that they kind of show right there. Like I said before in one of my earlier videos, Big Mom is she she showcases herself very different, very different personalities as you could say from the entire uh, Yonkos. Shanks Cruz, um, if I remember correctly, like I said before, they represent like a traditional pirate team. We got uh, what's it called, a White Beard. They were they were family as well, but they just called White Beard father. But they none of them were actually related to. To Whitebeard, though they respected him and loved him like a father, but they weren't blood related. That's how close they. That's how close the Whitebeard pirates were. For Big Mom's pirates, no, that was completely way different. And this chapter, like I said, is just showcasing th that even putting herself in this chapter is a is not. A, I would say afraid. Oh, actually, I would say yeah, yeah, just a little afraid. But the fact that they they're actually, I feel like they're almost brainwashed as well at the fact that. Like they they they're following Big Mom's orders, or that that they're weak minded, or that maybe Big Mom is just just as that as powerful. Now I don't want to stray too far from what what the actual chapter was explaining, but we're gonna go back to. It. I'm so sorry about that. 
carrying on. In this entire, entire chapter, like I said before, we actually get to meet the one and two pirates, I'm sorry, the Vinsmoke family members, and these characters are actually very, very methodical and very, very, I would say, they're down to the point that when they were actually, they, they went somewhere to go and, I would say, take down a whole nation, as, as they, they clearly explained right there. And they did it like in three or five, three or four days around there. And then you're just here wondering like, oh, these, these two guys are strong. And it kind of debunks a lot of theories out there that for for Sanji's brothers as if they if they were a killer or if they were uh, or family. I, can't remember. I think Roger's base kind of mentioned the fact that that. But like I said, like it kind of debunks a lot of the theorists out there. Like, man, now we actually get to see how how their, their uh, brothers are, and they actually look pretty quite strong, too. I like how the, their looks are actually more, uh, uh they kind of remind me of Cyborg 009, like the, the way their, their clothing style and, and their, their get-ups were, the hairstyling, too, as well, they just reminded me of that, all in, on, all in that essence itself, which I find it hilarious, too, because they, <laughs> they literally looked as if they, <laughs> they're ready to go to a concert and just be like, all right, guys, we're we're getting ready to give this this whole concert venue a time of their life. So go we'll come up, get my sixty six and the Vince Smoke family. You know, like I swear, that's the way I kind of picture them when they were actually facing down the whole country in turmoil too at the same time, which I kind of found that hilarious as itself, man. But gotta say. I'm kind of excited for these two characters. I actually want to see them more and more. And the fact that they actually look like they actually hate Sanji, the fact, too. Because they were mentioning that, like, oh, they're going to go to the brother's wedding. They, they just, they don't even care about seeing a brother. Which kind of shows the fact that, that this family, the, 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 I would say the, the higher the rank the family member is, the more they really are, like, I wouldn't say clo close to heart and where the family is. Which is kind of weird that Big Small's family is focusing a lot on family. Well, meanwhile, the Vince Smoke family is representing... I would say, non-traditional family members, they, they seem more like a business than an actual family, whereas Big Mom's Pirates are actually treating themselves more like a, like a very traditional, uh, straight-to-the-point line family, you know, like blood family right there. That's that's the way that I'm seeing it. Big Mom really... I'm starting to like Big Mom, I'm telling you. Big Mom is really is becoming a very enjoyable character in itself. But like I said, I want to stray too much. I'm sorry for straying. Continuing on. We actually also get to see at the fact that in this entire chapter, I'm starting to kind of doubt Pudding. Because in the chapter, we actually get to see Pudding. Uh, she They showcase a little bit more on how she's actually going to help Luffy help, help get him to Sanji. But when she was talking, when you notice that, you they actually showcases the fact that she said, Oh, I, then I guess I, I can't wait to find another man. Because the, the thing is, Sorry for all of you guys that are, are that haven't read it yet or are about to read, but Pudding was actually shot down by Sanji. Yes, Sanji did not did not say yes to Pudding. A lot of viewers, a lot of people, a lot of readers, they were not anticipating this. I for one thought they were, he was actually going to go with, or at least they're going to force him to. But no, Sanji actually said no. And I loved Luffy's reaction to that little scene as well. Looking at the fact that he actually was in tears saying that, oh, he he actually said that? Like, I just love the fact that, that you know, that <laughs> that's how much Luffy cares for Sanji, that he he was actually crying at the fact that, that freaking Sanji denied a woman. And you know, throughout the whole entire series of the One Piece universe, Sanji's always trying to get a woman. And now that he's offered a woman, he he's not going to take her, which I found that hilarious. Oda, I swear, Oda is a masterpiece when he, when he's actually trying to do this storyline. I, I am entirely 100% sure that a lot of One Piece viewers out there are going to enjoy this chapter. And also the fact that you got that you got to love the whole crewmate's reaction too, which I kind of felt actually signified my reaction too when I read that that little scene right there when Sanji denied Pudding's uh, marriage proposal. Like, it was so over-exaggerated because I actually was almost jumped off my seat, like, wondering, like, holy snap, you know, hand over my mouth, like, while I was reading. I'm here just as stoked, wondering what is going to happen now. What is it going to happen in the next couple of chapters? What is mom going to be doing now that Sanji doesn't want to marry? That's what, that's what we're wondering now, the fact that. And also, you got to remember the fact that 
the whole entire chapter pudding is actually i would say i personally feel that a lot of people are actually saying that let me first let me first say is that a lot of people are saying that pudding is helping the straw hat pirates yes she is in this chapter she is she's helping them escape the cacao island and they're gonna head to whole County to meet sanji where they're gonna propose to meet him in my personal opinion i feel that pudding no i just think she's a double spy she's putting on a double face i personally feel that because of the fact that it's it's big mom come on her pirate crew is not as weak as they as we would think so i feel like she's just trying to mislead luffy that's the way i personally feel that pudding is actually trying to mislead luffy into a trap that's what i basically feel that like that luffy's gonna be heading into but because of luffy's you know arrogant stubborn attitude He's going to be saying, you know what, who cares, I know I'm in a trap, who cares, I'm just going to go in there and just get Sanji and just get out of here. That's what I personally feel that Luffy's just thinking in the fact that because of the fact that Big Mom is trying to trap Luffy. Big, I feel like Big Mom thinks that, that Luffy is unaware of all these actions, that's the way I, I'm kind of seeing, but I feel like Luffy is aware, but it's just that he he just doesn't care. He has this nonchalant attitude in this whole in this whole. I would say arc that he just, you know what, like Big, Big Mom is doing all this extra work just for nothing. Which I kind of find hilarious at the fact that. And you also got to remember the fact that Pudding also loves... She actually now loves Sanji. You can clearly see. Even though Sanji put her down, Pudding still loves Sanji. Now, what's her name? Nami and and Carrot were saying... like You could tell they, they were kind of like... Of course, I, I want to say Nami loves Sanji, but more like platonically. But Carrot, Carrot loves Sanji in, in a physical manner, but... When they, they both are saying, oh, you know, they, they, they kind of showcase it like they, maybe they, they, they do love Sanji at the fact that. But because of the fact that, you know, Pudding was blushing and everything, I, I actually find it, found that funny that the fact that that Pudding couldn't hide her feelings from Luffy. And Luffy's just dying of laughter all the whole time. And that Pudding ha see, sees Sanji as like this magnificent man using all the, I would say, all, all his aliases that the, that the world government gives him. Like, she mentioned the fact that, like, oh, he has to do something with, he has, like, a black leg or something. And then Luffy just la laughs at the fact that, like, oh, you know, his his epithet has nothing to do with him having a black leg. Which I find hilarious, the fact that that's so true. It's just the black leg sound, it's just, it's just mimicking his style of fighting, which I personally found that funny. Even Luffy was laughing at the fact that, which I, I like I said, this chapter is very enjoyable when you're reading that. For all those long-term One Piece readers, you, all, everybody's going to be enjoying this at the fact and we also got to remember that the fact that Pudding also is, she seems weak, but I, I, like I said before, I just don't feel like that that's her. I just feel like they're probably falling in the trap. Like, Pedro has every right in this chapter to be very anxious and and on alert to be the fact that he doesn't trust Pudding. I'm, I, I'm, on, I'm on Pedro's side. That's why sometimes I don't think Pedro is an evil bad guy. A lot of people are saying Pedro is a spy, Pedro is this and No, Pedro is not a spy. He's just very cautious. That's all it is. And I personally feel like I am a, I'm join, I'm joining Pedro's opinion on Hoki Khan. And, you know, you just can't be taking that place too lightly. And I, I personally agree with Pedro. That, you know, Pedro, Pedro has the right to actually, he should have kept that woman on lock, have that knife to her throat and say, you know what, tell us what you know. That's what I personally would have thought that Pedro would have done. He was trying to, but because Nami kind of intervened in that scene, we couldn't get any more of that. Like, I'm telling you, like, they're trying to make this this whole arc whole lightly, but it's just, I feel like there's more. There's way more stuff at hand at this that Big Mom knows. Like I said, when you read the previous chapters, Big Mom knows Luffy is here. And Big Mom is, is not going to stop until she gets her hands on Luffy. And a lot of people are saying that there's theories out there that Big Mom is going to, I would say... She wants to eat Luffy or have him as part of the uh, on the dinner dinner table, which I find that's kind of very creepy and kind of oh, very sadistic as well. But the fact that that Luffy is gonna be the main course, like just yikes, Oof. it's gonna be that's gonna be one tough cookie to sell right there. And you gotta remember also the fact that all these all these characters that they're, they're putting in in this whole little arc, they're slowly coming together bit by bit. Now. You got now we see Big Mom as for more what she really is. Like I said before, family, 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 family. Remember that. So that's why I I'm sticking to my opinion the fact that all her family members are also sticking to a certain plan, and they're gonna probably lead Luffy into a certain trap because they're all like the Minks, you know, like they how they previously mentioned with the Minks that they actually were 
were following their plan to not to not throw away um, uh, Ray, Raging, or Rizo, Rizo of the, the ninja, if I remember correctly, I forgot his name. They were going to do that to him. Why, why isn't Big Mom's pirates going to do the same thing too, that they're going to keep their mouths shut all the way until they finally capture Luffy? That's what I'm personally thinking right there in itself. You know, like I said, this whole chapter is just one big smorgasbord of awesomeness. And Big Mom, <laughs> I'm still laughing at the fact that <laughs> Holy snap, she has 129 people in her family. Holy snap, Big Mom takes the cake, man. She takes the freaking cake. Who, who, Whoever's eating her cake gives props to it. Those men are men amongst, amongst the men. That's what I'm still personally laughing at the fact that that too. That is so freaking hilarious. This chapter made me die of laughter. Oh, man. I'm going to... Give a little silent prayer to all those those husbands that are there with Big Mom. May you rest in peace, guys. They probably are enjoying their lives, but it's only a once in a lifetime they get to mess with a big Yonko. Ooh, yeah. But we also, I'm trying to think what else that I'm trying to miss in this chapter as well because of the fact that there was so much information also in this chapter that they kind of showcased itself. And let's not forget, there we go, Peckhams. Yes. Peckham's is now nowhere to, near to be found. Now, he said, turn back. And it's still, like I said, it just turns back to my opinion that this is still all a trap that Pudding is also trying to set Luffy up. Peckham said, turn back. So what more can you ask that? All this shadow and this, foreta this foreshadowing is that that's happening right here and then. It's telling me that Luffy really is heading into a trap. And Pudding is playing along the lines of that. And since Peckham's is nowhere to be found, he he must have gone back and says because of the fact that he has to play along with Big Mom now, he can't do nothing about it. But you gotta remember, Luffy says at the end of the chapter, I don't care, just be guys on high alert. And I'm just like here, Dave, thinking, wow, Luffy, gotta love your sense of humor there. But I want to see how Oda's gonna turn this chapter around because of the fact that they're gonna traverse through a couple of islands to get to Whole Cake Island because they're still kind of like near the end of the territory because they show this on the map where Pudding shows they're still near the end of this so that, that's what we're, I'm wondering how they're going to get there if they're going to find any other traps if they're going to find Jinbei too in this chapter as well but these are my two cents on the chapter let me know what you guys think about this chapter I still personally feel that put, I, I feel like Pudding is an enemy I personally think so I don't think she's she's a hero or a heroine. Personally, though. And what do you guys think about the Lola reference that they mentioned when Pudding was talking earlier? That's hilarious. We're gonna see. We're gonna we're gonna be mentioning a lot about Lola now. Let me know what you guys think about Lola. She's gonna be in here for sure. And what do you guys think about uh, Pedro? Do you guys still think he's actually evil? Because I personally don't. I really don't think he's evil. I think he's he's just he's just a very cautious man. And let's not forget the fact that. What do you guys think about, how do I say, Big Mom's pirates and their, and their giant fiasco? <laughs> their giant fiasco around all the other families. What do you guys think about that? And what do you guys think about Germa 66 1 and 2, Sanji's brothers? What do you guys think about that? Let me know down in the comments below what you guys thought of this chapter. But that's it for this, this episode. And don't forget to subscribe. But this is Mr. Zen, signing out.